Grace and peace. I'm Brian Munster, the Baptist Campus Minister at Drexel University, and this is Peace and Power Christian Fellowship, the peace of Jesus Christ to change your life, the power of the Holy Spirit to change the world. We are continuing our series entitled The Discipleship Experience, Using the Spiritual Disciplines to Transform All of Who We Are into the Image of Jesus. We're talking about a mighty love for God and looking at strength. In the previous video for this lesson, we talked about what strength means in scripture, and that is our ability to make changes in the physical world around us based on the use of our bodies in an expression of what's going on internally in our minds and soul and will. So using the energy available to us in our physical body to change the world around us in a way that loves God would be what it means to love God with all of our strength. And the spiritual discipline I, we want to talk about, the active one, the first one we engage in in this lesson is service. But we're going to take a different spin on this idea of service. And actually, I think an important spin, and it's going to be something that I talk about a, a lot, but our work our vocation, what we do with the majority of our lives, not just serving others as a friendly gesture, but serving others through our work it is going to be the primary conversation we have around this idea. But first, let's look at Jesus and service. Here's a couple scripture references. John 13, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the feet and wipe them with a towel that was wrapped around him. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one of those feet, for I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. It's interesting growing up and um, connecting with Messiah College being um, in, uh, in Brethren in Christ churches at times. Foot washing is one of their church ordinances. They, because of the passages like this, they see foot washing as something Jesus has commanded us to do in this idea of service to take care of others and actually wash their feet is a spiritual discipline that exists within the Brethren in Christ Church that is um, helps them understand how to physically serve others and serve others' physical presence in the world as well. Um, yeah, and if you want, I would suggest doing it at some point in your life, washing someone's feet as a spiritual discipline, as a, as a way to actually get into your mind this idea of service. But Jesus Christ, our Savior, the God of the universe, served others in this very, very manual sort of a way. Well, so Matthew 20 says this, but Jesus called them to him and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them and their great ones exercise authority over them. It shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever be first, you must be much first among you must be your slave, even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus came to serve. Verses about service, Colossians 3. Bond servants, obey in everything those who are your earthly masters, not by way of eye service as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. So whatever we do, this is actually talking about slaves who, although slave was more than just an occupation, more than just a job, it was, you know, slavery is bad. And um, 
it it is a good thing that it technically it no longer exists in the Western world. We can argue about that. Um, you know, there are probably still places that we should be much more careful with what we call work and what we would see as slavery and, you know, human trafficking and um, sexual slavery is a huge problem in our world still to this day. But the idea was this, he's talking to people whose work was that of a servant. And and he's telling them to do it as if they're doing it for the Lord, to serve their masters in this way. And God, as if they were serving God, even though they were forced to do it, even though it was their means of living in this world, even though it was their work, even though it was a necessary thing for them, and they would not be able to survive in the world if they did not do it. He still taught them to do it in a way that it was serving their earthly masters as if they were serving God. Now, most of our work situations, I would hope that all of our work situations are not servitude, are not the idea of a bond servant or a slave. We are not in that situation anymore. So even more so that we are free employees, we should look to serve those we work for, whether that's the customer or whether that's our employer or our fellow co co-workers. We should serve them through our work and as if we were serving God in that way. Work as service. Learning to love God and to love our neighbor through our work is a meaningful way to include our bodies and strength in the worship of God. This will be a, this will be a life significant and lifelong discipleship process that bears great fruit in our becoming more like Christ. If we can actually see what we do for an occupation as a vocation, or the work we have as how we serve the world around us, that will be a lifelong discipleship process in a very meaningful and significant way we engage in the world. Some quotes here um, that kind of build on this idea. Thomas Merton, all vocations are intended by God to manifest his love in the world. What you do for work is a way God loves the world. If God can empower you to do your work as what a vocation kind of entails, it is God loving the world through your work. To believe that a wise and good God is in charge of things implies that there is a fit between things that need doing and the person I am meant to be. The world needs a lot of stuff, and I am designed to work in a way that provides some of those needs. There is something I can do that the world needs, and by working to meet that need is a way I can serve and love God and love others through my strength. The essential modern heresy being that work is not the expression of man's creative energy in service of society, but only something one does in order to obtain money and leisure. This idea, work, is an expression of who I am and a way I can use me to serve you. That is the primary thing work is. It is my service, my creative service to the world through the power God has given me. It is not how I earn money. It is not how I earn enough space so that I can really have fun. Those things could come from my work, but my work is the primary expression of who I am and how I use what God has given me to love the world and serve the world. Our daily work can be a calling only if it's reconceived as God's assignment to serve others. There may be no better way to love your neighbor, whether you're writing parking tickets, I wonder about that one, writing software or books, than to simply do your work. Your work 
can be the way God uses you to love him with all of your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Your job can be how you serve and love God and others. Most of us don't have work that way. Most of us will probably spend a lifetime of trying to find work that's like that and trying to tweak the work that we have found into being like that. But if you can find work that allows you to love God and love others, that allows you to use your strength to serve others, to if you're a carpenter, to make good tables that bring people what they need, if you're a chef to make good food, if you are a bus driver to get people safely where they need to go at a reasonably on time sort of pace, if you're a campus minister to help people develop as they're going through the college experience, develop this love for Christ also um, and serving others in that way. What we do for work can be how we serve others. I'm very passionate about this. You can probably pick that up and you can find so much more of this in other places. I do an entire series on what I call is workship, connecting what we believe to what we do as work. This is, but love God with all of our strength is how we serve others. And that can be through our work. Do you see your work as service to others? How could your job or your future job, I do deal with a lot of students preparing to do a job, actually serve others? Has a job ever changed you into a better person, made you more Christ-like? Serving and fasting. So those are some questions. Those previous questions drop down in the comments if you have answers for them. But we love God with all of our strength by using the physical energy available to us in the material world through the normal process of, of metabolism to make God-honoring changes to the world around us. Fasting temporary limits our ability to replace the energy we use to do godly things. It's very interesting to see how fasting and service relate to one another. And we're going to look at fasting. So service is the, the positive discipline, what we do. Fasting helps us not to get too tied up into doing and, and, um, and realizing there's a limit to what we do and how we do can serve God. As always, there's three ways to join it in person Sunday nights at 5 p.m. in the Jimmick, live Monday nights 7 p.m. via Zoom, these weekly wrap ups on YouTube and WordPress. I'm all over the social media Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, WordPress, YouTube. Those links are in the description below. Enjoyed having this conversation. I like talking about this topic a lot. So if you want more, there's plenty of more content on this idea of work as a uh, as a way to love the world. Love to continue the conversation.